Okay, let's look at sample problem 219. So as they say in Afrikaans, jy moet nou kop hou. Okay, gotta, gotta keep your head as we go through this. So we, we're basically going to look at a wrench. Um, okay, so it says determine the wrench resultant of the three forces acting on the bracket. So what do you notice here about these forces is that they're not, number one, they're not coplanar. Coplanar, is that how you spell it? Coplanar, and they're not parallel. Par all L, my teacher taught me in high school. Par all L. Okay, so they're not. They are just in um, different directions. So when we when we have this scenario, <clears throat> they are going. You're going to get a wrench. You're going to get a wrench, meaning you're going to get a force, a resultant and a component of the moment acting in the same direction. Okay, so let's go through the basics um, of simply number one. Uh, number one, we just calculate our resultant as we've always done before, and we calculate our resultant couple moment as we've always done before. Okay, I'm not going to go through that. You can see that there. We just add up our forces, and they say here, calculate the coordinates of the point P, in the xy plane through which the resultant force of the wrench acts. Okay. So we're going to take our, our, res, our resultant and place it at point P and then calculate the wrench, um, the coordinates, calculate the wrench and the coordinates of the point P through which the wrench acts. So, and also find the magnitude of the couple M of the wrench. Okay. So the, these are the first steps we do, which we've done before. Calculate the resultant. And then, this is going to be important for later. Here we have it in vector form. But it's going to be, be important to calculate our direction cosines. Okay. So remember the direction cosines are just simply, if I've got my x, my y, and my z axes, the direction cosines are just simply the angle between that vector and the x-axis, and the y-axis, and the z-axis. Those are my direction cosines. So make sure that you understand this. These are the direction cosines. So now I've got the, the cos thetas of... Actually, I wasn't very accurate. The direction cosines are the cos thetas. Okay? Um, so, if I was saying the theta x, okay, but, but this is all old stuff. Now, what is the moment of this force about point P? Well, let's look at each force. We have this force, we can call this Ry. We have that force that's Rx. Why do we call it Ry? Because it's in the y direction. And that's, so that's Rx and that's Rz. Now let's look at each force and see what kind of moments they cause about this point P. So let's start with R, what do they start with here? Rx. Let's start with Rx. So can you see that Rx is acting there? And here's point P. So it's going to cause a moment like that hope you see that. And so the moment is 20 times the perpendicular distance, which is y, 20y. And it causes this kind of rotation. And if you curl your fingers like that, then your thumb goes in the positive z direction. That's why it's k. All right. I'm wondering if I should make this slightly bigger. What do you guys think? Let me make this slightly bigger. All right, and so we're done. We've done with with this x. Um, it doesn't cause any other moments about point P. All right. What about this R Y? This is forty. Let me just clear everything up here. When you make it bigger, you you lose those notations annotations. So R Y. This is our y, it's 40, it's acting in that direction. As you can see, uh, it causes...
causes a moment about this x-axis, right? So imagine that that's the x-axis over there. That 40 causes a moment like that. So it's 40 times 60 millimeters, right? And the rotation is like that. And if you curl your fingers about the x-axis like that, you'll see that it's going in the your your thumb is pointing in the negative x direction. So that's that moment there. So it's about the x-axis, that's why we multiplied with i. Now that same force also causes a moment about the z-axis. Right? 40 times x. 40 times x gives us a moment about the vertical z-axis. And that will also be negative because if you curl your fingers in this direction, your thumb will be pointing in the negative z direction. So we've got that. Okay? So Ry causes the two moments that we see here. Okay, what about Rz? Rz causes a moment about the x-axis and it causes a moment about the y-axis. But it doesn't cause a moment about the z-axis because it's pointing in the z direction. So... What is the moment about the y-axis? What is the moment about the y-axis? So we have to find this perpendicular distance there. Right there is our force and there is our perpendicular distance about that axis. And so that distance there is 100 minus x. That distance is 100 minus x. So that's what we have there. And because the y-axis is positive there, uh, this is causing that kind of rotation. And so if you curl your fingers there, you'll see your thumb is pointing in the negative y. So that's why we have minus 40 times 100 minus x, j. Okay. Now that very, very same force is also causing a moment about the x-axis. There's the x-axis. Can you see that? And so there, that now is your perpendicular distance, which is 80 minus y. So this whole length is 80 minus y, and so we're looking for that distance. And it is causing a rotation like that. So my thumb is pointing in, in that direction, which is in the positive x direction. So that's why I have 40 times my moment on and it's a, about the x-axis so guys please practice this make sure that you can get this and then when i compile those together we get our total moment in newton millimeter okay that's just uh, we just compile them together we put all the um all the x the i components together we put all the j's together and we put all the k's together now, let's critically evaluate this. Remember that this moment is pointing in a direction that is not necessarily perpendicular to this force, that resultant force. Okay, this is the point of a. If you've got these three dimensional forces pointing in all kinds of directions, then you're not necessarily going. You could, but you're not necessarily going to have a resultant force and a moment that are perpendicular. So there's a portion of this moment that's pointing in the same direction as the, the resultant force and a component that's pointing perpendicular. Okay. Perpendicularly. Perpendicular. So, so let's just draw this conceptually. You've got R. There's R. And you've got some moment somewhere. Right? That's this moment that we just calculated. Now what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to get, um, not in this specific example, but it's made up of a parallel component, a perpendicular component, and it's made up of a parallel component. That could be either pointing in the same direction or opposite direction. So we're trying to calculate this parallel component of this moment that we just calculated. <clears throat> so... In the same way, 
that we got our direction cosines for the for our resultant R to get its component in the X, the Y, and the Z, we also calculate the direction cosines for this vector. And the direction cosines are just simply the X component. So cos theta X is just your X component, your MX, over M. Your cos theta Y is your MY over M. Cos theta Z is MZ over M. That's, that's what we got here. MX, MY, MZ. Okay? Now, listen to this. We want to get um, this parallel component. So, th the direction cosines of M are going, we're going to equate these to those, to, to those that we calculated for R. Because we they're, they're going to give us the same direction. Okay? So we say, let's just go back here. Here are the direction cosines for the resultant R. Theta x, cos theta x was this, cos theta y two thirds, cos theta z two thirds. We now equate these, we equate that cos theta to that cos theta x, that cos theta y to that cos theta y, that cos theta z to that one. So we say a third is equal to this. Two thirds is equal to this. Two thirds is equal to this. We equate them. That's what we've done over here. And we solve and we calculate our M. That's the magnitude or the, the scalar value of, of our M. By the way, this is, the, this is the, the magnitude of the component that's parallel to R. And here are the coordinates. X is 60 millimeters, Y is 40. So, so 60, that's 60 and 40. And so we apply R and the moment at that, the wrench at that point. Okay. We see that M turned out to be negative, which means that the couple vector is pointing in the direction opposite to R, which makes the wrench negative. Okay. Okay, guys, please practice this.